Welcome, everybody. Welcome to YouTube land. This is Mr. Justin Tyler, the parent association, a parent as executive um, here at the school. I said parent association. I have parents on my mind, right? Because I think about the parents because uh, that's my role. But the parent um, uh, relations executive here, my name is Mr. Justin. We're here today for the high school back to school night, but virtual this time, right? Not in person. So uh, we're gonna have a good time. Uh, we have the whole group ready um, in terms of the ELA and social studies team. Um, obviously the fearless leader of upper school is here, Mr. Eamon Gregory as well. Um, so we're gonna really jump right into it because there's a lot of people here and they have to introduce themselves. And so I'm gonna hand over my baton, my imaginary baton to Mr. Uh, Eamon Gregory, introduce himself. Thank you. Uh, so welcome to the back to school night for high school. Um, we're going to do introductions of all of the staff over the next 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Um, at the very end, we'll get to look at the leadership team and talk about that. And then we have some talking points for everybody just to give a brief overview of some of the stuff that we're doing this year. And then we'll leave it up for a, a bit of a Q&A. So if you're on YouTube in the comments and you have a question, you can post it there and we'll get to it at the end of the show. Um, so. I will start with my right hand there. And um, Mr. Cox, do you want to introduce yourself first? <clears throat> yep. Muted. Hi, uh, I'm Mr. Cox. I am uh, teaching this year. I'm a high school history teacher uh, as, as part of this team, and I'm also serving as the dean of, Acad a dean of academics this year. So, oh, and I'm, uh, I'm from Philadelphia, and an interesting thing about myself is uh, I have a, a penchant for accents. I'm not going to do any here, though. Himself. Yeah, another interesting fact would be you worked in a pet shop, correct, before? Yes, yes, I did. Yes. Good experience. <laughs> Very educational. Yeah. Uh, Mr. V, do you want to go next? Sure. Um, my name is Brian Van Merlo, and I'm head of the department for both uh, social studies and English. I teach grade nine geography, AP human geography, and one PE class. Interesting fact, I guess, would be that I get to play hockey and golf uh, in this wonderful country. Yeah, hockey, hockey in a in a desert is an interesting fact, yeah. all right. <laughs> yeah. Um, Miss Garcia, do you want to go next? Hi, everyone. I'm Sarah Garcia. Um, I teach ninth and tenth grade English, and um, I'm from Florida. Um, fact about me: I love cats. I adopted a cat last year who is currently struggling to be on camera, but <laughs> he's here with me right now. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. Um, Ms. Stein, do you want to go next? Um, hi, everybody. My name is Ms. Uh, Nadia Stein. I am the mm -hmm. high school years history and AP psychology and regular psychology teacher. Uh, she muted herself. Sorry, don't know. Oh, sorry, guys, I keep seem to do it automatically. Uh, interesting fact is I'm new to the school, but I've been in the country for seven years, and I'm from South Africa. Yeah. And then do you want to pass, we'll pass the baton on to the, the other South African in the in the, in the the window right now, Miss uh, Bibli. Hi, um, I'm Lee Bielby. Um, I'll be teaching modern world history to 11th graders, as well as AP seminar and AP research, which is a new course at GEMS. Um, interesting fact about me is I used to swim provincially um, in South Africa, so that's where I'm from. So I used to do that for a little bit. I also love cats, so I'm the same as Sarah with regards to that. <coughs> sure, we have plenty of parents out there that love cats as well. Um, <laughs> and then Mr. Miller, uh, last but not least, do uh, you want to introduce yeah. yourself? Yes, sir. good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jabari Miller. Uh, I'm teaching uh, grade 11 and grade 12 English um, this very year. Uh, I'm actually from uh, New Jersey uh, in the States. Uh, my family is from Jamaica. And uh, an interesting fact about me, I have practice with this one, but an interesting fact is I dance capoeira, you know, so it's like Brazilian martial arts. Um, you know, I've been active for maybe like, I don't know, four, five, six years. Uh, but I love it. I love it. I love the culture and everything about it. It's, that's my yeah. thing. That's pretty cool. So mm -hmm. as you can see, we have a, a, a pretty stacked social studies and English uh, language arts team. Um, I think even on, on the screen here, we've got four teachers who are actually offering AP this year. And we've got 
Uh, Miss Garcia does has done training for AP English and, and maybe in the future we offer that. Um, but it's a good, strong social scene with a lot of options and a lot of variety for our students. Um, thanks, guys, for tuning in. Um, you guys can move on and we'll, we'll start getting the um, maths and science department in. But thank you for your time. All right, thank See you, everybody. See you. Yeah. All right, guys. All right. All right, so let's transition now to math and science, right? That's the next yeah. crop of individuals. Let's bring in some people here. Boom. And then we're going to bring in Mr. Takeed as well. All right. Yeah, we're like two minutes early, so I, I, I'll jump in and just, or a minute early. Mm -hmm. And one of the things we just want guys to be focused on for next week is that we're going to have a bit of a uniform enforcement uh, across the whole school. Um, and parents, just please make sure that your, your, your students are coming in in full um, uniform, black shoes, have a scarf, have a, have a tie, um, and they have their shirt tucked in or whatever, and they dress appropriately. And um, so starting next week, we're going to sort of start to enforce that. We've been really nice for the first few weeks. Um, and I believe our uniform store just got a, a fully uh, new shipment arriving yesterday. So we're stocked, loaded and ready for anybody who wants to buy the uniform. Uh, and if anybody's going to ask that question, PE isn't really on yet. It, it, hopefully when we're allowed to offer PE by the Ministry of Education, uh, we'll start in October. But in September, usually they're just in class because it's too hot to use the outdoor facilities. Um, so please, uniform, be proud to be one of our students. And, and, you know, it's the same. I always use the analogy, like if you were on a soccer team and you walked onto the football pitch in something that's not your your, your football jersey, uh, you're not really respecting your team. And I don't think uh, that's the way I sort of think about uniform. So if you're proud to be a GAQ student, You'll be proud to wear that uniform and um, just like we're proud to dress up every day and be uh, teachers. Um, so, yeah, um, I think we have everybody. Is there anybody we're missing? We uh, believe Mr. Clifford is uh, he's out at the moment. He might be able to pop in later on. Um, so and so Christina and Muna and as well. Hi, Christina yeah. and Muna. But let's get started. Um, Mr. Khaled, let's start with the left. Uh, so just introduce yourself and then give us an interesting or silly fact about yourself. He doesn't, uh, he's gone. <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he liked being picked first. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> let's go, Mr. Marley, you've been here before, so you can go. I can hear me. Uh, Asalaamu Alaikum, good evening. Uh, my name is uh, Tawheed Mali. I'm currently teaching chemistry, biology, and AP chemistry. This is my third year in Qatar, third year at GAQ. Um, I'm from Cape Town, South Africa. And a fact about me, I used to uh, uh, Rubik's Cube competitively. So it's called speed cubing. So I used to do that competitively. Yeah. Oh, I've got to see that. Um, <laughs> I already said that. I'm going to have to bring a Rubik's Cube in. Um, hold on, hold on Mr. Marley. What else do you do? <laughs> what else do you do, Mr. Marley? Stop playing. You you could tell them what your yeah. good skill is. <laughs> oh, so okay. So are you, are you referring to the skateboarding? I do that. Oh yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Hobby. oh yeah. You're a beast at that, man. Rubik's cubing. <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, some people might disagree with me on that one, but um, I like the skateboarding one. I like that one. <laughs> okay, you do that next time. Yeah. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, uh, Mr. Uh, Khaled Hatum. Do you want to try again before? <laughs> Don't know what happened. <laughs> yeah, I just got good timing. So, <laughs> yeah. uh, sorry about that. My name is Khalid Hatoum. I teach uh, calc, AP, calc, and geometry. Um, an interesting fact about me is I love gardening. I hope I can uh, get on with the school on that and see if I can get something going at the greenhouse. Mm -hmm. Very good. That's cool. That's awesome. Awesome. Um, then on to uh, Mr. G. Is that I mean, what you want, you want to be referred to as Mr. G for the rest of the year? No, I don't care. My name is Mr. Googe or Mr. G. A lot of students have trouble saying Googe, so I tell them Mr. G is fine. Um, but anyway, my name is David Googe. I'm from uh, South Florida in the States. This is my second year in Qatar, my first year at GEMS. I'll be teaching Algebra 1 and Algebra 2. Um, An interesting fact, um, I was involved in Boy Scouts my whole life, and I'm a proud Eagle Scout um, from Boy Scouts of America. Oh, very good. Mm -hmm. um, I used to do the, the Jamboree, uh, which is the Irish Sea Scouts. Um, mm -hmm. 
and I, I, it was a jamboree in America, and it was apparently the best one they've ever been to. Um, Did so, you yeah. didn't go? No, I didn't go. I, that was the year I left. Um, <laughs> so they got it. Um, Miss Ali, uh, on to you next. Hi, um, my name is Miss Ali, um, and I teach biology and AP biology. Um, I'm probably the reason why some of your students who are taking AP biology have been very stressed <laughs> because of all my homework. Um, this is my seventh year um, here at GEMS, um, and a lot of the students, I do remember them, and I do remember the parents from sixth grade, and now they're graduating, so it's been a journey. Thank you. Um, and Miss Belint, last but not least. Uh, yeah, but what about uh, Miss Ali's interesting fact? Mm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I forgot that there's an interesting fact. Uh, interesting fact, me and two of my siblings share a birthday week. So mine's on like August 4th, my sister's August 6th, and then my brother's August 10th. So wow. when I come back in the summer, we do a birthday week celebration. I don't just do one day, like just wow. August, you know, pick No, August, if we do one day, it's never my birthday. It's gotta be the younger sibling because there's 10 years between me and her. So she just turned 21. Wow. Wow. That's an expensive week for your parents. It's <laughs> a week for me. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. For the siblings, too, if y'all do that. <laughs> That's a good point. Good point. Uh, Miss Belint. Yeah. Hi. I'm uh, Christina Belint. I am the environmental science teacher for mostly grade 11s and 12s, and I also teach grade 8 science. Um, the head of the math and science department, and this is my fifth year starting here at GAC. Um, interesting fact. So before I was in Qatar, I was the director of a nonprofit NGO in rural Dominican Republic. We did a lot of uh, community development and service learning programs there. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it's really a cool. lot of people don't know that. And uh, Miss Belin's been here for a while. Um, you also did uh, like karate or something in Japan. I've seen. Yeah, I have a, I have my black belt in hapkido, which is a Korean martial art. Yeah. Mm. Full of surprises, Miss Belint is. Yes. Um, all right. So thanks, guys. Uh, that's the maths and science team. Uh, we're going to get you guys to log off, and we're going to bring in the electives teacher. Uh, appreciate your time. Uh, Thank you. I appreciate y'all. Have a good day. All right. So next on deck looks like it's electives team. So we'll bring them in. So Mr. Hashem is waiting in the wings. Mr. Castleberry. It's waiting in the wing, so we'll let everyone else come back in because it was full capacity in the backstage before. So, yeah. I've got a few. What's the beeping sound? <laughs> That's everybody going into the Google Hangout saying they can't get into the show. Ah, so we need people to leave. Uh, Mr. Cox, do you want to leave and then come back? There are too many of us amazing people to fit on here at once. <laughs> Seems like it. <laughs> yeah, we can have 10 in, in the stream, I believe. or we, well, I think we can have nine yeah, in the 10. stream and one in the back room. Yeah. 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 Um, so this one has six, should be eight of us. Uh, yeah. So we're getting close to that capacity, all right. Um, <clears throat> so let's get started. Um, so Mr. Gad, do you want to introduce yourself, what do you do, and give us an interesting fact? Yeah, hi, I'm um, Hashem. Uh, the students know me as Mr. Gad. I have been at GAQ for four years now. Um, an interesting fact about me that not many people know is um, I like reading and writing poetry and I've been published a couple of times. So um, not many people knew that. It's something I'm quite proud of. We need to get that somewhere in the school, just up on a wall somewhere. Poetry. Oh, I would love to read your poetry because I'm a poet as well. I would love to read it. We can exchange, yeah. Yeah, love to read that. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Castleberry, on to you next. All right. I'm Mr. Castleberry. I have been, this is my third year at GEMS, and I teach 6th through 12th grade applied music, which is different from the band program in that in the band program, they get to choose one instrument and they learn to speak music through that one instrument and i teach them to speak music in ninth through 12th grade also through an instrument but an instrument that's not typically a band instrument because i teach piano and guitar and voice 
So those are two different programs, but they teach pretty much the same things. Um, interesting fact about me. I've lived in climates that range from minus 50 Celsius to plus 50 Celsius. So this is definitely not the coolest place that I've been, but it's also not the hottest place that I've been. What was the hottest place that you've been in? That would be Saudi. Saudi. Mm. Okay. It's hot. Yeah, in in, interior Saudi Arabia has got Qatar beat. Yeah. Mm. They don't beat us in many other things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> miss so because we're in the music area uh, miss leach do you want to jump in and, and talk about the band program sure thing hi everyone i'm michelle leach i am the middle and high school band teacher and i'm also the co-teacher for ap music theory that's a new course we're offering this year uh, mr castleberry helps me teach it as well um, so in band i teach tra traditional concert bands so instruments like flute clarinet, trumpet, and trombone, things like that. Um, interesting fact about me, I'm a huge dog lover, so much that I started an Instagram account for my own dog. So if you ever need a little dose of happiness and want to see some cute photos, I can send you her Instagram handle and you have that uh, to enjoy. So thank, thank you. you. Um, Ms. Warner, do you want to talk about the drama and theater program? Yeah. Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Tracy Warner. Um, the kids know me, the students know me as uh, Miss Tracy. Uh, this is the third year that we've been doing drama. We've really increased it. Um, so now we're able to offer a full time um, six through 12. So we're pretty excited about that. Uh, this year, we're hoping our intention is to put on an actual school play. It hasn't been done for a long time, and we're very excited about that. So it's not just open. Uh, for the actors in the program. It's open to anyone uh, in the school who wants to be part of it. So um, there will be an announcement in the newsletter tomorrow uh, that comes out. So please read it. Um, there's signs going to be posted all over the school as well. We're going to be doing a modern version of The Wizard of Oz. So it's quite a new take on an old classic. So if you talk to your son and daughter about this, even as I say, if they're not in the program, um, they are certainly welcome to audition. We're holding auditions all through next week at the lunch period between 1030 and 11 up in the studio. And all they have to do is, you know, really want to be part of it. So they can audition with a song, a dance, a trick, a magic trick, whatever it is. Um, we're really looking forward to that. And um, a fun fact about me is that I'm a published poet as well. So we can all yeah, get together and do poetry. And maybe if there's any parents out there, we can do a, a community of, uh, of poets. So is this, the, to, is this the English yeah. department? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank English rejects, I guess, yeah. right? Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And, and put, sign me up for a tickets if we do get to watch the performance hopefully in, if in we, a few months if we that. don't if we don't get to um sort of interrupt if we don't actually get to do a performance because of the situation that we're in we're definitely going to film it and put it out as a as a video as a movie so um, awesome. lots of things to look forward to thank you mr and um, on to you next miss larue Hi there, um, I'm Laura LaRue, and I guess to many of you, I'm a familiar face. Been uh, GEMS for, this is my seventh year, and this year I'm teaching just high school art one, two, and AP art. Last year we had a really successful AP art program, and this year has been a very popular choice for students. So, um, I'm really looking forward to it, and I do think it's going to be a lot of work, but it will be worth it at the end. Uh, and an interesting fact about me is uh, I learned how to make, uh, I, I forged my first knife over the summer, and I learned how to um, forge some knives. My husband has been doing it for a few years, and his his brother and, and him got me involved in the forging process. I have um, the blisters to prove it. They've healed now. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you, Ms. LaRue. And then uh, last but not least, uh, Mr. Ramirez, do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah. 
Hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Daniel Ramirez. I teach AP Computer Science. Uh, there's two courses of that, Principles and A, and I also teach General IT to the rest of high school. Um, I've been doing that for, this is my third year, and my first year doing Computer Science A, so it's really exciting to get to bring um, more high-level technology classes to the school. Uh, a fun fact about me is, I guess kind of related to what James said, is that I've never lived somewhere that isn't a desert. So I was born in Arizona in the States, which is the Sonoran Desert, and I lived there all the way until I moved here in 2018. So I'm a desert dweller 100%. Wow. Thank you, Mr. Ramirez. That's cool. Yeah. All right, guys. Uh, so that's the electives team. A uh, nice big spread of uh, options there. Um, we're going to move on to the leadership team or the languages team next. Languages, yep. um, Mm -hmm. So appreciate your time. Thanks for popping in. See y'all later. <laughs> Bye. Bye-bye. All right. So we'll move on to languages. Um, all right. So we're bringing Senora Cobos. All right. Senor Cobos. Yeah, I did this wrong on the thing. Madame Dorsef. Yes. Yes. Um, and then, yeah, so I think a lot of people will be coming back on because we're a little bit, you know, uh, behind. So I think a lot yeah. of people will come back on. So when they come on, I will put them back onto the main stage. Perfect. Right. And is the, the Arabic team there? Is there any of the Arabic team? No. No, they might have done Not yesterday. Yet. So um, if they don't Not show yet. up, it's probably because they've done yesterday. And then, yeah. And um, so um, they're coming now. <laughs> but they are coming now. Yeah. Ali Hassan is here. Yeah. Yeah. People like this tree. They don't go out. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Thank you. <laughs> uh, let's get this started then, uh, because we're running a little bit behind. But I'm uh, Miss Cobos. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. Hi, my name is Cristina Cobos. I have been teaching in Gems for five years. This is my sixth one, and I teach uh, high school Spanish and AP language and AP literature. I am very proud of the two programs of AP. We have had very good results. And uh, yeah, and I'm happy to be teaching another year in GEMS. And a fun fact about me. Well, a fun fact is that I love dancing and I have created two folkloric ballets, one in Singapore and one in Doha, and we're still like, active and, and it's beautiful. Yeah, thank you, Ms. Cobos. Um, from Spanish to French, I guess. Miss uh, Dorsaf, do you want to do you want to talk about uh, the French program and yourself? Uh, yes. Hello, everyone. I think um, many people are familiar with me. They know me as the like the French teacher because I was the only one uh, in Gems. This is my uh, fourth year in uh, Gems and my third year teaching uh, French for high school. Uh, so uh, this year I'm offering French one, two, and three. And uh, I'm really excited because uh, of uh, thanks actually to the students who choose to continue to do French 3 even if it's not credit because they still interest in the language and they still want to learn it. Uh, this year I'm going to uh, be working more about communication and speaking so, um, so to, um, to enforce the, the language uh, of the students and I hope it's going to be a fun year for everyone. Uh, a fun fact about me, um, I don't know, but uh, I am, uh, I understand eight languages. I speak four fluent and the other four, I may read them and understand most of them. So, which is not uh, very common. No. <laughs> and I'm what, what are the four that. languages, Ms. Dorsef? So, uh, I speak fluent Arabic, French, English, and German which is I forget it a little bit now because I don't find people to practice with. And the other four that I understand, uh, so Italian, uh, Spanish, like I, I, I can read, but I'm not fluent like Ms. Cobos, uh, mm -hmm. Korean and a little bit of Turkish. Multilingual in our language department, it's good to see. Thank you, Ms. Dorsef. Um, let's Thank move you. on to Mr. Hassan. Hey, Assalamu alaikum. Uh, I am Ali Hassan. I am the head of Arabic and Islamic department. I teach uh, now. I teach grade 12 Arabic and grade 11 Islamic non-native. That's for high school. I'm still teaching another uh, middle school classes. 
uh, and I wish for everyone a successful year. I'm so proud uh, of what we have done last year with uh, with all of our students, uh, and I hope that we go forward for better, inshallah. Uh, you can contact me all time regarding anything of uh, related to Arabic or Islamic, um, and thank you. Thank you, Mr. Hassan. You do great, great job as Arabic department head as well. And um, Mr. Kak or Mr. Mustafa, as I remember yeah. from yesterday. Yeah, yeah. Hi, assalamu alaikum. My name is Mustafa Kak. You students know me as Mr. Kak. Anyway, I teach uh, Arabic and Islamic studies for uh, high school and middle school. This year, I teach grade ten Arabic and grade twelve Islamic studies for non-native speakers. Also, I teach uh, grade eight and six Islamic studies for non-native. Uh, this is my uh, seventh year in GEMS, and nice to see you. And I'm looking, the, yeah, I'm, uh, I, I like to communicate with you. If you have any question, anything you need to communicate with me, please inform me in any time by email or WhatsApp or anything you want. You are welcome anytime. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mustafa. Uh, and Miss Rania, last but not least, because I believe Mr. Rezek uh, is sick, uh, he's not going to be joining us. Um, Hello, alaikum. I am Rania Mukhtar, Arabic teacher and Islamic studies for native and non-native, um, grade 10 and grade 11. This is my third year in uh, GMS American Academy, so I hope fantastic year this year, inshallah, for all. Thank you so much. And I must post, I think I do have one of the best Arabic and Islamic teams in the country. And I will say the exact same for my Spanish and French team. And thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, and and hold on, the best hallways. The best yeah. hallways. Yeah, and the best hallways yeah. at the moment as well. Very decorated, Definitely. very colorful boat. Um, so I'm happy with, with all the decorations that have gone into it. Um, thank so you. thank you, guys, uh, for joining. Uh, we're going to move on to the leadership team now. But appreciate your time and, and have a good night. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. So last but not least, we'll bring in leadership team to the show. Oh, I can't leave. What's wrong? I got you. I, I, here you go. Have a good night. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we'll add to the stream. Talk show. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Running the background and everything, so <laughs> all right. So we're gonna add everyone here. We're gonna be busy on this one, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. There we go. Oh yeah. So um, I'll go first. Uh, my name's uh, Eamon Gregory. I'm the upper school principal. I've been here for seven years, done multiple different roles, and really happy to be the principal this year and to, to, to move forward with the school and grow the school in, in a positive way. Uh, we're really looking forward to starting the year and we've great ideas. Um, fun, interesting fact about me, like, I haven't thought of one actually, even making it, all staff do one and I haven't thought of one. Um, I'm a, I'm a self-taught artist and I guess I, I, I like to draw my, my spare time if I do get any spare time. Um, and, Instagram if anybody wants to follow me but it's just purely my art so there's nothing there um, but yeah that's me uh, we'll go on to maybe Miss Thomas do you want to go next introduce what you're you're doing yes hi my name is Nikisha Thomas and I'm the new high school counselor uh, a little bit about myself I was born in Jamaica but I grew up in New York something unique about myself is that I'm a part member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and our aim is to be of service to the community our motto actually is to be a service to all mankind and um, I also love fitness I try to exercise at least five times a week very good. I wish I was able to keep that. Yeah. <laughs> um, I need to get on that one. <laughs> yeah. Um, Mr. Wessel, do you want to go next? <clears throat> Absolutely. Thank you, Mr. Gregory. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Wessel, and I'm the upper school assistant principal this year. Um, I've been in the country for about a month, and uh, so far, really excited to, about what I've seen, about the people I've met, and things are, are going really well. I feel like we've gotten uh, a really good start to the year, and I'm excited about what's going to happen with the rest of the year. Um, interesting fact about me, 
uh, before getting into education, I had a lot of different, I wouldn't call them careers, but different jobs. Um, <laughs> I worked as a, a horse groom at a stable. So I cleaned up after the horses. I was a, a hunting guide in Western Colorado, and I worked as a cook in a number of different uh, establishments. Very good, very wide variety. Um, Miss Ali, do you wanna go next? Sure, hi again, uh, my name is Miss Ali. Um, as well as teaching <laughs> science this year, I'm the new uh, Dean of Student Life. Um, and what that entails is that I kind of help the students with their extracurriculars and enrichment. So one of the things under my, I guess, purview at the moment is clubs. So while we can't do things the way we normally have with our after school program um, and having the students in person, we are trying to figure out creative ways to still have that enrichment. Um, and one of the initiatives that I've started is having students begin their own clubs and manage them so that they can get leadership opportunities. So we already have quite a few students who've taken that on and even some new students who have approached me this week, which I really like um, to talk about new initiatives. Um, I'm also in charge of the health system. So we're trying to bring that back and hopefully have health challenges again, again, not in person until COVID regulations stop, but we are hoping to have some type of activity at least four times within the year. Um, and really, I think I just go over the overall school experience for the students. What are they doing outside of the class? Uh, which is very important because I think one of the things that, you know, parents ask me, what else do they need to do apart from academics? And I think, uh, you know, the 4.0 GPA isn't the most important thing now. You know, it is important, you know, good academic scores, but uh, having those extracurriculars on students, uh, you know, CVs for say and, and stuff is really important. And, and top universities and colleges are looking for that to see if a student's more well-rounded. So, you're important because you're in you're in charge and making sure that those you know opportunities are around. So we appreciate Absolutely. everything. Thank and you. And I think I forgot Spirit Days. Yeah. So once a month, we do like to let the kids kind of show their individuality and dress down. And we just had our uh, September Spirit Day, which was superheroes. And the one upcoming is a breast cancer fundraiser. So we're gonna have a Pink Week. Um, and we already have a few initiatives and a few ideas kind of rolling on how we can raise as much as we can this year. Every year we do some type of fundraiser and donate the proceedings to the Qatar Cancer Society. Thank you. That sounds awesome. And um, Mr. Cox, do you want to go next? Yeah, sure. Um, I'm Mr. Cox. Uh, I was part of the uh, social studies and uh, language team earlier, but uh, my role here in, in the leadership team is uh, as the dean of academics. And my main focus is going to be on grades and making sure that we're uh, um, catching uh, struggles and times of adversity very early on uh, so that we can uh, course correct very early. Um, I think we'll get into some of those specifics a little bit later on um, after the introductions. But um, I have another fun fact um, for myself. Um, I'm left-handed uh, for writing and eating, but I throw, do everything else sports-wise right-handed. So if that counts as ambidextrous or not, um, so I can't throw with the left or right. So, yeah, I don't know. I guess I have to look into that, what counts as that, but yeah. Yeah, thank you, Mr. Cox. And yeah, we'll talk about more about your role later on when we get to the talking points. Um, and then finally, uh, the most important person in the building uh, who keeps all of us in the job and the school running uh, is Mr. Lenz. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, happy to. Um, for those of you who are new who don't know me, um, my name is Mark Lenz. I'm the head of school. Um, proud to be the head of school at uh, such an amazing school and work with such amazing people. Um, throw out a few uh, interesting facts. We do this a lot, so uh, for those viewers, if you'll forgive me, I want to see which interesting facts these guys haven't seen. Um, see if I can come up with a new one. Um, and Mike, we need to talk because you're the only other human I know of who does that. I write uh, with my left hand and I do everything else with my right hand. Um, I even shave with my right hand, but I brush my teeth with my left hand. So go figure. Um, so, um, yeah, I think most of you guys have heard me at one point in time say that I'm one of the few people I know who've captured a live bear. How many of you guys have heard that? You've heard that one a few times. Yeah. Okay. Um, pretty good with a lasso and have in fact 
lassoed uh, horses on a horse ranch, okay? Um, uh, I have once taken about 110 to 120 foot fall off a cliff in the back of a cave um, and managed to get out alive. Um, that's a new one. Okay. Nobody else. Nobody's heard that one, right? No, that's a new one. Okay. There you go. Uh, similar to Mr. Wessel, I considered myself a reasonably avid outdoorsman uh, in my younger, slightly more fit days and have a plethora of unusual experiences that go along with that that I like to share with people if they're interested. Um, so yeah, I will stop and turn things back over to you guys. Okay. Thank you. So, um, Everybody, that's the introductions. We've gone through all of the teachers. We've met our awesome teachers and, and, and we've met our leadership team. Um, so right now we're going to go through some talking points. Might take hold 10, up, hold up. Minutes. I don't introduce uh, myself? Oh, you, yeah, well, you did it. I, I, I don't introduce myself? I mean, I've been waiting patiently. Right? <laughs> I'm playing, I'm playing. But um, <laughs> I'm Mr. Interesting Tyler. Fact. Right. Well, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> All right, so I'm Mr. Tyler, uh, Parent Relations Executive. I'm joking. I did introduce myself before, right, in the beginning of the show. Um, interesting fact. Ooh. Okay, when I was in college, I was a bouncer. Yeah. You were a like bouncer? Club bouncer, right? Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Cool. <laughs> you're definitely the right size. Yeah, you're the right yeah. height. <laughs> it, was, it was a lot more chiseled back then. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but I guess now, uh, Eamon, we're going on to the part where we're doing our talking points, right? For right. upper school. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Mm -hmm. So, if anybody has uh, questions or, or things that we don't discuss in the next 10, 15 minutes, just put it in the YouTube chat and we'll we'll try to address those questions at the very end. All right. And um, so, I think the first. Uh, talking point we're going to have is is you know map what is map and why do we do it and um, mr wessel could you take that <clears throat> yeah gladly um map testing is it's the measure of academic progress and uh, it serves a lot of different purposes so in the high school grades 9 10 and 11 are going to take the map test uh those will be coming up in just a couple of weeks uh tentative dates are already set and you'll get a lot more information about exactly when that's going to happen and and tips for being ready for that in the in the upcoming days, uh, but the the tests uh, serve a lot of purposes for for us as a school, uh, for the students, for the teachers. Uh, number one, it allows us to get a baseline for a student's uh, achievement level at the beginning of the school year in reading and mathematics. Uh, so that then later in the school year, when we do the map test again, we can uh, check for growth and and progress, uh, and that's what we're all here for to, to make sure that the students are growing, they're progressing and they're learning things throughout the school year. And then this, this first test is especially important for us because it gives not just that baseline, but within that baseline, when we dig down into the details and the data, the teachers are able to uh, look specifically at what the individual students and what groups of students need uh, in particular. So if there is a certain area that needs to be uh, addressed, then the student, or the teachers are able to do that based on the data that they get from the, the test. And trust me, there's a lot of data that comes out of there. Uh, another reason, uh, and a, a very important one too, is to see where our students at GAAQ stand against an international, uh, uh, international students, so students from around the world. So this is a, a test that is based in the United States, and you put, you've got international school students around the world, and a lot of American students who are taking this test. So it gives a picture of where our students stand in relation to uh, the rest of the world. Yeah, thank you for that. Uh, and then we'll move on to the next one. I'm um, sort of, you know, flipping the page here and, and Mike, you might wanna talk about your role a little bit more, um, but how important, you know, is, is it to do homework and to keep up with assignments? Yeah, so obviously they, a big part of, of school is is the schoolwork. That's uh, how your teachers are able to see how the kids are doing, how they're learning, where they need to improve. And ultimately at the end, when report cards come out, um, that's a B factor. It really kind of helps uh, determine uh, the grade, the number. Um, and throughout the year, they're going to have assignments and they've got a lot of classes. And, you know, at times keeping up is going to be uh, more challenging than, than uh, other times, but uh, the students really do help themselves out if they're making a very focused effort, make it a goal to keep up and stay on pace with those assignments. Um, 
when the, when the students when the grades are are low and um, when they're, we're looking at outcomes that they that they don't want to have at the end of the semester, um, a lot of times it, it's it's not that uh, the kids can't can't do the work or, or don't know the material. Um, it's, just, it's just they haven't done the work, and the teachers not had a chance to um, validate that. So, um, you know, from on one hand, you know, the grades are, are part of it, but more importantly. These assignments, they're not there as, as busy work. They're there to give the students an opportunity to practice, to see where mistakes uh, are happening and to revise their work, and ultimately prepare them for the assessments that count for a larger uh, portion of the grade. Um, and really falling behind, you know, even if you turn in the work and, and you still get a decent amount of the credit for turning in late, uh, the usefulness of those assignments uh, really takes a, a, a drop if it's not being done um, in tandem with the rest of the class and what the learning activities are uh, that are planned for each given week. Um, now, I guess this kind of is where we shift a little bit into the academic probation side of things and, and kind a, of my... A, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, the next kind of, talking point, but you can lead into it, academic probation. Yeah, yeah, so if assignments aren't, aren't being kept up with and, and you know, tests and, and projects and whatnot aren't, aren't panning out in a, in a, a, a great way, um, this is where they're going to pop up onto my radar. My my main uh, focus is to be going through the grade books weekly and to uh, check where where the students are at and how they're doing. Um, and this year we're starting out. I've got um, several kids kind of on, on my caseload right now, and I'm going to be uh, keeping close tabs on them because last year was was really tough. Uh, it was really tough on the students. That was very obvious. Uh, it was tough on you guys, the parents. Uh, we know it was tough on us, the teachers, as well. Um, and we we kind of looked in the mirror here at the end of the year and and thought about ways that we could do better to make sure that we're um, identifying uh, areas of struggle early on and addressing those from the beginning of the year and hopefully head off those problems before they pass. Um, if we get to the progress reports at the end of the quarter and, and grades are in, in a bit of a concerning state, that's where the students will be put on academic probation. Now, I want to stress that despite how that sounds, it sounds very ominous, very negative. It sounds like a, a punishment. Um, that is definitely not what it is. Um, it is a support structure um, for us to, to be able to step in and, and really um, take care of these problems before they snowball into something bigger. Um, talking with a couple of students this week, this one of them asked, uh, did, since I'm on probation, does that mean I can't like do clubs or I can't do this? No, no, that's not it at all. They, we want, I he said, what, what do I need to do? And the students that are on academic probation just need to really make sure they're taking care of business. And um, if that's, you know, I'm going and checking the grades and it seems like they're in, in great shape and they're on track to earn their credits and on track to graduate, um, they're not going to not going to hear from me all too much. It's, it's almost like they're not even on the academic probation. It's an easy way for me uh, to said keep up with the kids. Um, and again, if that's not working and we got to look at some other solutions, we take these on a, a case by case basis. Um, uh, to, to kind of see where the students need to be and if we have to look at other strategies and other ways that uh, we can support those students. All right, so if you ever have any questions about that, um, please reach out. I'm, I'm really happy to be serving in this role. I've been at this school for six years. This is year seven. I'm really proud of, of what we've done and uh, excited for the opportunity to, to help out students that aren't in my classes. So. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, very, uh, you know, and, and, and it is those tough conversations that we have. Uh, we, we like to have them early. If a student is, you know, struggling, we want to talk with the parents because it's that support system between us, the parents, admin, if all three of us can work together, and uh, that student has a support system and hopefully they can, they can turn it around early on. And uh, it's more to do with support and just making sure that parents are aware um, and hopefully catching it early so we can, you know, change the outcome. Um, so thank you, Mr. Cox. Uh, I think the next talking point uh, is club spirit days, uh, house system and events, Miss Ali. I think you've sort of talked about that already, but do you want to maybe hear talk about the service hours um, program and sort of and maybe because that links in with the clubs and events and everything? Absolutely. So our students are required to complete service hours. This was originally 100 hours over the four years that they're in high school, but we have reduced that, understanding that there are limited opportunities here, especially with uh, COVID at the moment. So we've dropped this down to 40 hours, um, and students can gain these service hours even just by participating in some of the clubs that we're going to be offering and launching next week, Sunday. Um, I am accepting all 
uh, work. Like, uh, if, I think one of the questions was about if the student had a work experience over the summer, as long as they are not receiving money, it's volunteer work, so I can accept that. Perfect. Um, thank you, Ms. Ali. And that's very important. Again, as I said earlier, it's about that, you know, colleges are looking for those extracurricular things and the volunteer hours and, and why that's important to us and our graduation requirements is because we value that and, you know, helping the community in, in Qatar and around. Um, so thank you. Um, on to the next point, I think it's just the AP program and, and why is it important? What is AP seminar? Um, you know, Mr. Wessel, do you want to talk maybe about the, the AP program and I can maybe go into, I'll, I'll talk about the AP seminar when you're done and sort of give an, an overview of the AP seminar research, capstone diploma, etc. cetera. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so the AP program, if you're not familiar with it, is it's AP means advanced placement and it's an opportunity for students to to gain what is college level uh, credit and, and knowledge and learning style while they're still in high school. So these are courses that are designed to be to be challenging, um, but they're challenging in a way that allows for students to uh, choose what areas they are strongest in. So uh, in this program, if, if, a, if a student is, for example, a very strong math student and they want to take advanced math courses, this is an opportunity for them to take things like AP calculus that we're offering here. And, and we have actually two different AP calculus, I believe this year is AB and BC. So uh, it's, it's adaptive to the students. It's highly challenging. And it's something that uh, we're actually, it's a point of pride at, at GAAQ that we're offering uh, a very large number of AP courses. I believe that um, as a, it was at 20 courses, I believe this year, uh, and I was looking and students are still signing up in their courses. But as of right now, there are 94 students at GAAQ that have signed up, registered into their classes. There's still more to come. Um, and that's and, and they're registered right now, enrolled in 160, so 160 enrollments. So a lot of students doing multiple AP classes. Uh, and like Mr. Gregory touched on a little bit earlier, we've got courses in art, uh, biology, calculus, chemistry, computers, uh, history, human geography, music theory, psychology, uh, Spanish language, Spanish, Spanish literature. And then uh, I think a, a good point to hand over in this year, and uh, we're offering the AP seminar and AP research which is part of the capstone program. And I'll let uh, Mr. Gregory talk a little bit yeah. more about it. Yeah, we're, we're really proud about this. Uh, we started the AP seminar program last year. So it, it's the only AP course that you have to start. At a, uh, you know, you can't take it in your senior year because it's a two part sort of course. And uh, so you take it in 11th grade AP seminar and then in, in 12th grade, you take AP research. They're sort of both linked. Um, but it's, it's essentially uh, to, to compete with IB diploma. Um, so students who do AP seminar, AP research, and they do three or more um, APs and get a three on those, those tests, they get this AP, AP capstone diploma. And honestly, the AP capstone diploma, and we have a few students this year who are really excited, who, who are probably going to get that. Um, and it's going to be really exciting to, to share that achievement. Uh, as a community, but the, the the more important part is the skills that they learn. It's it's about the process, and it's probably the the first time that a student gets to go through like an essay uh, writing skill, and and it sort of preps them for. I was talking with Miss Bibley, who's um, offering an AP seminar and research this year, and she was talking about how she would have loved to have done done this in high school because it would have set her up for her thesis writing and, and her essay writing in college because it is a research-based, essay-based uh, 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 option. Um, and we have space in the AP seminar program right now in 11th grade. So if there's any students out there who, who, who think they're, you know, academically, you know, on top of their game, it's a really good uh, thing to have on their CV for colleges and universities. Um, and I really recommend it. So if any of, any of the students are listening right now and they're considering AP seminar, please come and talk to me and I can try to figure it out. And um, again, it is for students who, who are willing to challenge themselves and take a, you know, a course that is at a university level in high school. And um, yeah, we're really excited to, to celebrate the AP Capstone Diploma if they get it. 
If you don't get the capstone diploma after doing AP seminar and AP research, I believe you just get a, a diploma or, or something, a certificate, uh, which is also an achievement in itself. Um, so if you're interested, please let me know. Um, but that's pretty much the AP program. Uh, we are, I think, one of the, you know, there's not that many schools in Qatar that offer the AP program. And I think we are probably up there with the most competitive with a wide variety, like 20. We have 20 AP courses. We only have 40 teachers in, in, in upper school. Uh, that's middle school and high school. So offering 20 courses, AP program means we have a very rigorous and very uh, competitive program. Um, so we're very happy with that. Um, on to the next point, which would be Alma and how do we use it? Um, and, you know, and what the parents use it for. And um, so I'm sort of the Alma wizard. Uh, if there's any issues with Alma, you can come talk to me. Uh, Ms. Shubana is also our software engineer. She's she's really helped me out in the last year. Um, but Alma essentially is where we put our grades and um, where attendance is marked, where your report cards will be and, and sort of where we look at transcripts. It's our student management system. Um, and I know I can see already in the YouTube chat, there's a few questions about Google Classroom and Alma and why, what's what, um, but I'll address that later. Um, but yeah, Alma is there for students to see all of this and parents have access to it. So if parents want to know what their grades are, their child's grade are, they can log on and they can see exactly how they're doing. Um, and they can see if they've been late for a class midday, uh, you know, block six, if you're like, you were late for your English class after lunch, why were you late? Uh, it's a perfect way for you to have that conversation, reinforce, um, those conversations that we're already having with all of the students in campus, but, um, you know, it helps if parents have access to that as well. All right. And that's sort of what Alma is used for. And I think the last talking point that we have, um, Miss Nikisha is the seniors and sort of, uh, the senior night that we plan on doing next week, which is going to be on September 15th at 5 PM. And um, it did get approval today for that. So we're going to do a, a sort of a zoom meeting and, um, but do you want to talk about the seniors and sort of how, how you plan to see them this this month? Yes. Um, well, my goal is to actually meet all of the high school students, and I will be doing that uh, via a minutes meeting, which I will set up um, for each student. But for this month, we are going to start starting next week with the seniors um, to kick off their university application process. Um, so I will be meeting with them individually. Also, next week, we will be sending you an invitation for our parent senior night. And students and parents should and are invited to come to that so we can discuss um, timelines and all of your questions that you may have. Um, we are hosting an international university fair. And it's taking place September 28th and September 29th, two-day fair. We have over 120 universities um, who are registered so far to participate in the fair. And it's set up for our students. And this is an opportunity, whether um, your son or daughter is in grade 9 or 10, 11, 12, it's for all of our students. So they can start planning ahead of time start asking questions, what are the universities looking for, how they can build um, on their CV so they can have a good student profile and portfolio um, when it's time for them to apply in grade 12. So I invite all students and parents to attend these, uh, this fair and communicate and have that one-to-one -one opportunity to speak to universities directly, directly. And it's going to be universities from around the world, okay? Yeah. UK, Canada, the US, Europe. Um, and then also, um, yeah, we'll be sending you a registration form so you can actually see the universities ahead of time and write down which universities you would like to meet and speak with. Perfect. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. And I believe that is the first time that we, we have had university fairs in the past. Last year was a bit difficult, but we did have some, some drop-ins with a handful. But this is a, a massive, you know, um, you know, moment like you can get in and there's over 100 universities and colleges. And, and I know sometimes parents are like, but they're only in grade nine. But uh, that's sort of the track. They're in high school now. Their GPA matters. They need, need to start thinking about what's next and, and what's after high school. Um, and I know it's really early when you've, 
you've literally been in ninth grade for only two weeks. Um, but it is important, I think, for all students, and we're going to be promoting that throughout the school over the next two weeks to make sure that everybody's there. And um, so, parents, it's a good one for you guys to be in and, and, and be there with your, your 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 children and just making sure they have everything that they need in order to get into the universities and career paths that they want to take. So thank you, Ms. Thomas, for organizing that because that is definitely going to be something we're proud of um, at the end of this month, and we want to make sure that everybody gets there. Thank um, you. So I also want to mention one more thing, just in case our students and parents are receiving emails from Unifog, and I just want to let you know that it's not spam. Um, <laughs> Unifog, <laughs> Unifog is a career preparation tool that students are using. Um, here at GEMS. So, and that's how I will also be communicating events and um, opportunities for students to start exploring their pathways. So uh, parents, you might be receiving some messages on Unifog as well. Yeah, perfect. Okay, um, so I think we've got maybe five, 10 minutes. Justin, do you wanna roll into some of these Q and A questions? Certainly, we have some uh, funny comments, some serious ones. So, so a mix of everything. You referred to as Drake. Yeah, I'm, sure I don't, not, I'm not Drake. I don't think I, I'm I Drake. <laughs> I think that's you. I don't see Drake in here at all. But you know, I guess there is a Drake <laughs> <laughs> looking like a doppelganger. Uh, it's not the first time I've been called that in this school. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think that's a compliment. <laughs> I don't know, man. I'm past my I'm past my good days. I'll tell you that. Um, <laughs> so I'm gonna put some good ones up here. So. Good evening, Lee, as well. Good evening. Um, and then we have another one from Gustavo Muller. I've always appreciate the way the school conducts these meetings. Nice to meet the teachers, and I wish everyone success. I love the positive vibes. Thank you so much, Gustavo. All right. Um, let's move to uh, another question here. Uh, referring to your Drake, uh, this is the comment here <laughs> from one of the students, I'm assuming. <laughs> Um, but let's get to some serious um, comments from parents, all right? So, uh, Mr. Davey said, I want to record a formal work experience that was performed by my daughter um, this summer. I have sent this question via email to Ms. Ali. Is that correct? Um, Ms. Ali, I guess you're the person to yeah. send this information to, right? So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. And hi, Lee. Okay. I, uh, I've already actually responded. Okay, cool. We'll okay. move on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so the next one, um, good evening, Fawad. Uh, what is the best time to start looking at universities for high school students? We have every year university fairs, but when should parents really get serious about it? Good question. Really, I can answer that question. This process starts from grade eight, really. Um, so students and parents should start exploring pathways from grade eight all the way up to grade 12. It's important now that you are communicating with universities so you know ahead of time how to plan for the next four years or for the next three years, what opportunities I should start collecting in my CV, how to start researching how I can go about collecting those opportunities. Good questions to ask universities at this time is, what does a general student profile look like? What are some um, activities they're a part of? And yes, it doesn't necessarily mean that your daughter or son should definitely do that one particular activity, but it just might start um, getting the brain work into get some ideas of what might interest them um, and what pathway they might want to take on their own now. So it starts now, wherever yeah. you are now. So if you're in grade 10, it starts now. If you're in grade nine, it starts now. Yeah. And that's uh, and to link into that, that's the reason we do the PSATs. And I know some parents are like, well, why do you start the PSATs in grade eight? Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? And uh, we, you know, SATs are offered here in Qatar, but not in our school, but we do PSATs in grade eight grade nine, grade 10, and grade 11, because we want them to get practice at those SAT exams because it gives them an opportunity and a, and a chance to practice that before they go into an SAT exam and get that on their college entrance. Yeah. Um, I have a question about that, Mr. Amen. Um, just for the, the parents out there today uh, looking at this. So for the SAT, why is that important? 
And then when was SAT, kids like so take Miss that? Thomas, you might be better at yeah. answering that than me. Because <laughs> okay. I know some people get confused between SAT and ACT. And so yeah, right. ACT yeah, yeah, yeah. right. Um, both exams, whether it's the SAT or the ACT, they're both standardized exams that university admissions use um, to make a determination on admissions as well as using the high school transcript, they look at SATs and ACTs. But typically it's American universities that look at these exams, but more and more universities, even in Canada and in universities in the UK and Europe, for instance, I know that Edinburgh in Scotland looks at SAT subject tests. Um, so it is important to start doing those research now to know whether or not you need to start preparing. And generally they say 150 hours um, each year, students should take time to do those hours um, to prepare for the SAT. Just so you know, Khan Academy is College Board official and College Board is the organization that administers the SAT um, and Khan Academy is the official partner for SAT prep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's free. That's yeah. So one yeah. of the and things it's like it's free. Yes, it's free. it's free. You can go on, you can get them on and you can join that straight away. Yeah, definitely. Good question. A yeah, very good question. So we'll move on to another question, another popular question coming up. Um, so for Mr. Davies, my main question is how to gain access to Google Classroom as it seems to be where assignments are posted. Yeah, there was uh, just because, you know, we're in the um, I, it, it's sort of not the best answer, uh, Lee, so forgive me, but uh, we, because we have a, a domain in the school that's for protection of the students uh, and their Gmails, there was a bit of a glitch over the last week in which parents couldn't be accepted into the Google Classrooms, even if they got the invite link. Um, and Ms. Shubana is our software engineer, and I believe she solved it uh, maybe yesterday or today. Um, but, you know, I'm going to follow up with that and just see what the issue is and why um, parents aren't getting access to the Google Classroom. But there is, you're, you're, you're correct, there is a way for parents can be added to the Google Classroom so they get uh, at the assignments posted their, to their Gmail. Uh, some parents hate it. Some parents really like it. Um, but we're going to try and make sure that it works so that the option is there for any parent that really wants to see the assignments that are posted every week, every day and every week. Yeah. Okay. All right. So another question similar to this, but um, Google Classroom for parents is not yet working, I believe. Are we going to use both Alma and Google Classroom? It was a concern that was raised to me today, actually, by a parent. Uh, just that, you know, there was a lot of stuff on Alma. There was a lot of stuff on Google Classroom and they don't know which platform we're using. And um, so I am going to sit down with my team next week and we're just going to look into, you know, if majority of my teachers are using Google Classroom, I think I'm going to ask that all of my teachers use Google Classroom. But I want that, the, you know, the, the link and, and the passcode is going to be posted on Alma. Uh, so everybody can go towards Alma and get everything that they need. And, um, you know, whether it's the link or the password to get into the Google Classroom. And um, it was just, you know, I trust my teachers. I don't want to to um, take away from their autonomy of being professionals and, and their profession, they know what's best. Um, and some of them have stuck to using Alma because we used it last year and some have gone to Google Classroom, but I understand where the concern is right now where it's a little bit confusing. Um, so we'll, we'll address that next week and hopefully have a solution. All right. All right, so um, two parents actually had a similar um, comments. Uh, so I think they just wanna know about like how do they look into assignments, notifications, syllabus, they want to see uh, behind the scenes, right? You know, uh, as parents. So is that possible? Uh, yeah. Well, the syllabus document, um, so I, I, I wanted to refresh it because it was 492 pages. And um, so over the last few weeks, uh, I've just been editing it uh, to try and make it a bit more parent friendly. And um, so that should be ready this weekend. And then, but uh, at the same time, Lee, if you if you reach out to one of your teachers and ask for their syllabus, they should be able to send you a copy of just their syllabus so you don't get the, the full, I think it's still 250 pages. I don't know if you want to read through all of that. Um, so if you ask the teacher, they'd be able to post you the syllabus that they have. And then the assignment notifications, again, just like um, there was an issue with our day started, we had a a Monday through Friday uh, on Alma, and I've told teachers to hold off on posting assignments on Alma, but the assignments should be on Alma, and that should be a good indicator of when they're coming in. But again, I think it links in with his previous question, which was to do with the Google Classroom. 
And once yeah. we have that access for parents, they're going to be able to see the assignments that are posted there as well. All right. Yep. This is a good question, but a sad one. <laughs> um, I'm going to post it on here as well. Are there going to be internships for seniors this year? Uh, no. Uh, so we we will revisit this and we might bring it back. Um, we were trying to do some interesting stuff last year, but unfortunately due to COVID, um, internships is, is actually a, quite a big job. Uh, and we need it sort of at the beginning. You know, you sort of set that up in the end of your junior year going into your senior year. But unfortunately, we don't have that. We can't have, uh, you know, students working in in kitchens or, or um, you know, getting job experience in hotels or army base or in dental surgeries right now just because of COVID and, and, and tracing and stuff like that. So we will bring it back, hopefully, uh, but not this year. All right. Next one. Well, can I add something to that? I just mm -hmm. want to add, I, right now, there are other opportunities. It's not an internship, but if there's ways that students want to explore their um, their pathways, for instance, engineering, um, there are online opportunities. For instance, Coursera or edX, a student can take a course from MIT for engineering, and that's something they can put on their CV right now and have it completed by November, by December, just in time for their application to add as something they have done to explore uh, their career choice. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. Yeah, that's pretty All good. Right. All right. Um, just want to say that uh, Mr. Davies says thank you, you know, for that answer. All right. Um, we're going to go to the next question here. Um, where can I find a list of all the APs available next year? Oh, next year? A uh, little, little early, yes. Um, <laughs> a good indicator would be what we offer right now is probably there. And, and I think, you know, we did offer AP English and AP French this year, um, but we didn't have enough sign-ups, so we didn't offer the course. But th they might be the two that aren't offered this year uh, that will be probably added next year, hopefully. Um, and... I have to see that that's a that's a very complicated question, Asma. Um, but yeah, there should be just as many options as there has been this year. And um, but it depends on you know if I have my some of my AP teachers leave me or if new teachers coming in with good qualifications who want to offer an AP course. You know we could grow, we could go down, but um, we're hoping to have in or around twenty AP options for next year. You know, if I could jump in there real quick, um, Asma, one thing to remember, if, if your child at the school sees that there's not a course that we're offering and and it's something that they're interested in, they should come and tell us now and, and we can start looking into that. Um, and even if we can't offer it at the school, there are other avenues that we can possibly pursue and make sure that all the students get to take all the courses that they really want to. Yeah. Okay. All right. So let's go to another one. Would the kids be getting any help in building their CV profiles for college admissions? I know from my end, any opportunities that I receive from universities, because even the good thing about Doha really, or Qatar really, is that we have a huge education network here in Qatar. And a lot of times the universities here offer opportunities for students to go on campus and, um, and participate in activities to build their CV and to build their pro profile. Because I know Well Cornell, Texas A&M, they always have opportunities for students. So anytime those opportunities arises, I will definitely inform you and students. Um, and I say, even if you think that oh, I could do this next year, no, go ahead and do it now. You know, at least it's a good opportunity to do it. And if you don't like it, at least you could go on to the next thing or something else. Um, also, the good thing about Unifog, which I love, is that um, there are resources to create CVs. And these are uh, lessons that I will work with the students so um, they'll know how to create a CV. And as they go on, they can add to a CV. So we'll go do those workshops um, at different points throughout the year. Thank you, Ms. Thomas. And, and also, too, I would add that one of my other talents is that I'm a, I'm a professional resume writer, um, have certificates in it, you know. So I've, I've done workshops with the students in the past at the school. So if you want to do another CV workshop, another resume, another cover letter workshop, I'll be glad to do it for the kids. No problem. All right. Multi-talented. So <laughs> <laughs> only have those Radio only two talents. Almost, I have. PRE, right. Yeah. 
Drake doppelganger, you know, whatever you want to do. You know? <laughs> All right. So we have another question here. Um, is there an expected change to the schedule for the Arab Cup? I knew this was coming. And I, this is I, exactly know, why I have Mr. Lenz yeah. here. He said, you know, yeah. he's been sitting quiet, but he can he can take this one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that is a great question. Um, we have seen many rumors. Uh, well, rather, I can't. I don't think you can see a rumor. Heard many rumors. We've seen a few things posted that we are not sure are true. Um, the official channels we've reached out to at this point sort of say await further notice. Um, so the one thing I can tell you is as soon as we know, you will know. Um, and the moment we don't have any other access to information other than what you've got. Um, so, um, I would just be weary of things that you see on, on, uh, Twitter and, and Snapchat and, and those kinds of things. Typically my experience has been if it ends up in one of the local newspapers, um, and it, and it has a specific minister's name attached to it and is quoting them pr probably a pretty good sign it's official um but even with that we usually wait until we hear something specific from the moe um for confirmation yeah fake news at the moment is what all the students are asking me i'm saying it's fake news so until we hear well, yeah i'm um i'm american so i'm from the land of fake news we, we come from that <laughs> <laughs> so I'm joking. A little joke, little joke. All right. So a follow up question um, as well. Is there a plan to switch asynchronous to synchronous days as the students um, are challenged and missing opportunities? Yeah, I, I guess I can take that, Mark. Maybe you can jump in if I don't get it on a nail. Um, we want to have every kid back on campus. Um, 100% like we we agree that the synchronous learning model of like you know kids every day is is the best model but unfortunately um you know we don't have that option at the moment we have 15 in a classroom and we're only allowed to have 50% capacity on on campus because of the Ministry of Education and Ministry of Interior and the Ministry of Public Health uh, instructions so we're trying to work with the best that we have right now and again we believe that the the, the model that we have the synchronous and asynchronous uh, model that we have right now is the best model. Um, Mark, I know you sort of talked about that last night in the middle school. If you want to, yeah, I can. You know, I just say I've been in. I'm I'm in a Doha heads group, and we're all racking our brains to do the best that we can for our students, and we're all admitting that what we're doing is imperfect. Um, and all of us would love to have our kids 100% on campus, but but those schools who do have their kids 100% on campus right now still have to adhere to the maximum 15 in a classroom. So I literally know of schools and the ones that are able to do that, just a reminder, that's based on capacity. So we have a capacity of 1600 students, but we have 1100 and at 50%, that's only 800 kids. Um, we've brought as many as we can on. Um, we do have pre-K and KG1 coming in every day. Uh, and we're always looking at other ways to try and bring more kids on campus. But the, t the, the schools and heads I've talked to that have everybody on campus, you have a supervision problem because you got 15 kids in that classroom and 15 kids in that classroom and the teacher bopping back and forth. I would not feel safe having kids in a classroom unsupervised. The, the most creative model I've seen is having two classrooms with their doors open side by side in front of the teacher. The teacher sits in the middle on his laptop looking at the kids on Zoom and looking in the rooms to make sure that the... Uh, but that then means the teacher's teaching the children on Zoom and they're on Zoom, in which case we might as well just go back to completely at home learning if we're all interacting on Zoom. That's, there's no in-person learning going on, even though they're 100% on campus. Um, and I've also, I've, we had, I've had tons and tons and tons of requests for room and Zoom, which is, can't you just teach my kid at home um, all the time at the same time you're teaching the kids in school all the time? And there's only two options for that that I've seen. Uh, one is, the teacher just teaches normal and you set a little camera up somewhere and the kid at home sits and passively watches what's going on in the classroom. Um, I told the story the other day that uh, Mr. Gregory and I and, and Miss Nikisha and Mr. Wessel got to sit through somebody's 40 minute presentation passively and I was falling asleep and feeling depressed and just anxiously trying to get that meeting over with. Um, I can't imagine doing that eight times a day. Uh, and then the other, the other possibility 
is again, we go back to, I'll teach the kids at home on Zoom and the kids in front of me in my room are on Zoom. Um, it's not effective. So the, our, our model is based on really good research that states that kids in the future need independence in their learning. And our goal is to provide our goal. You, it's, it's an, uh, as far back as 1993, Alison King said, teachers should be a guide on the side, not a sage in the stage. She was discussing the difference between passive and active learning. Passive learning is the idea that I, the oracle of all knowledge, sit on stage and dispense information and the empty vessel receives it. Um, that doesn't work. Um, it's archaic and study after study after study have shown it's generally, it's great for rote learning. Six months later, those kids aren't gonna remember a thing. Active learning allows the kids to engage in the material and, and they have to be able to learn it on their own in some fashion. Um, that's the model we're using. That's what all good educational research says works best in blended learning. We're proud of it. We're not, not going to say it's perfect. You know, we've just, we've been doing it a year. I think this year is better than last and I hope next month will be better than this one. Um, but that's, that's why we've chosen the model and, and that's what we'll stick to until they, they tell us otherwise that we can bring kids back on campus and then we'll dance in the hallways and, and excitedly let your kids back on campus and figure out how we're going to deal with that conundrum. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. I couldn't say it any better. Um, <laughs> we're going to go move on to the <laughs> next question. Um, and this question is, is there any way I can take calculus in grade 12 alongside pre-calculus or maybe as a summer course? Um, Asma, I will talk with you when I see you on school. I think that's a good question. And there is a way. I think I just looked at your um, schedule. Um, I know you're in grade 10 and you're currently taking Algebra 1. So Algebra 2 is the prerequisite, the pre-calc. Um, but I can talk with the teachers. We need to look at teacher recommendations and a few things like that. But usually a student has to do Algebra 2 and pre-calc before taking a calculus course. Um, but we do not accept online summer courses. Um, so just be wary of that. Uh, the Qatar uh, Ministry of Education doesn't accept online credits. Um, for courses for makeups and stuff like that so that's not an option but there is an option to double up in mathematics maybe next year and then be able to take your calculus in grade 12. so we can talk about that more in person um and also i'm just going to make an announcement for the sake of time and efficiency uh we're at the last five seconds i mean five seconds five minutes um five seconds would be you know too too little but five minutes um before we wrap up everything okay it's good, it's good questions <laughs> yeah they are no they are definitely um, so Manoj says, awesome. Thank you. Well, thank you as well for being here. Um, so next question, are there any plans to bring back online distance learning zoom on the day students are at home? I think the only time that that maybe might happen now is if a teacher is actually, you know, in quarantine for two weeks mm -hmm. and because of the new update with, um, you know, when we do the swab test and if you contact trace it now, that if a student gets their result back and they're negative and they're vaccinated, they're able to come back on the campus. Mm -hmm. And I believe for the most part from grade seven up to grade 12, I think like 95% of my, my, my student body is vaccinated at this stage from just talking with people. And um, that means there isn't really gonna be that that Zoom um, anymore, hopefully, unless a teacher is out for two weeks, which all of our teachers are vaccinated again and hopefully, you know, we're protected against the virus. So. I think Zoom Zoom lessons hopefully are a thing of the past, and you know, I know it frustrates my teachers, but it might be there. But for the most part, I hope not. And um, all right, yeah. Um, we have one more question here, and it says, "Is it possible to allow the seniors to come to school every day as APs yeah. are intensive?" Yeah, this I, I addressed this the other day as well with a parent. Um, it's more complicated than you think, uh, just because we offer so many options. Uh, like for example, even when with our PE course, uh, you have PE course right now and you have 9, 10, 11, 12th graders in that course. We have AP courses like AP Human, which is offered in ninth grade, which has 9, 10, 11, and 12th graders in it again. Um, so if I said, yes, the seniors could come back on campus um, again, I would then be neglecting the 11s, 10s, and 9s who are taking those AP courses. And there, it's very hard to teach that, if you, if you get me. But also, again, we can only have 15 in a room. 
um, and a teacher in, in one. And some of these AP courses have 25, 24 kids in, in them. So it just, at the moment, it's not possible. But hopefully, if the Ministry of Education or Ministry of Public Health look at this and, and, and feel that, um, you know, vaccinated students can be on campus and we can have class sizes of, you know, normal sizes 25 again, that's an option. But at the moment, it's just not. Okay. I think we, we have another one that snuck in before the buzzer. Um, so <laughs> uh, when Always are you planning? <laughs> yeah. When are you planning to start fully on school? I think I answered that as soon as we can. Um, if we, the plan is, if we had every, could I get everybody in tomorrow? We would have that, but at the moment, it's just, it's just not an option. Indeed. Well, I think this is a good point to maybe wrap it up. It's been, you know, pretty long day for all of us as educators, parents, students, etc. So um, I want to personally thank um, all the panelists today, all of our wonderful faculty. Uh, staff members that took their time out to come today, as well as all the parents um, and the students that were in attendance on the live stream. Absolutely, we would will, we will love to have you in the school. <laughs> um, I'm not really used to this uh, back to school on live stream, but we have to do what we have to do. So hopefully this was still beneficial um, on this platform. Um, so anyone else want to take it away with their last words or takeaways uh, to the uh, audience so today? Beneficial, um, on this platform. I did yesterday. Someone else want to go today? <laughs> Thanks, everybody, for the opportunity. Um, I hope it was helpful, and we hope to see you guys on campus as soon as possible. Thank you. Peace, guys. All right. Go Raptors. Have a good one. Salute. Go Raptors. <laughs> we are GAQ. <laughs> <laughs>